Last time, my cockroach and bedbug infested apartment was taken care of. Do not panic. Everything will be fine. And it was fine. Eventually I got rid of all of them, and the cockroaches, and I was able to have a cozy place to live again while I finished my year-long work contract. Now that I've finished my work contract, I'm back in the van, and on the road again. But before we talk about where I am now, I have to catch you up on my story. Packing for van life is like trying to fit a square peg into a circular hole. I was not expecting my van life to start like this. I, uh, I just have to leave this mess and drive there right now. I'm so overwhelmed right now. So this is delaying me moving out of the apartment. A lot has happened from when I bought the van to now. I didn't realize how much work would be available to me during this time, so I've been accepting work contract after work contract after work contract, which was not really part of the plan, and it's been burning me out pretty good. Work was really stressful. I won't go into detail, but at one point it became too much. My health began to fail me. At one point I even had no desire to be alive. I felt so ill. It's just like I had the flu or something, and. This is just the after effects of it. Whew, I can't even think. I'm gonna try and find some cold meds. Cold and sinus? Oh, jackpot. This is not an endorsed product. My plants are dying, kind of like how I feel. It was unfair that in order to make a living, I felt like I had no choice to surrender to this way of life. <sighs> and remember, at the same time, I had been dealing with bed bugs and cockroaches. A difficult situation triggered my desire to give up and quit. I had even written a resignation letter. And I went to my doctor and she said, don't quit your job, take a hiatus, take care of yourself, refresh and go back, which I did. I'm learning so much about myself and about life lately. Just having the realization that I can't change other people, but I can definitely change my perspective. I cannot control other people. I can't control how they perceive me. Once you change your perspective, other people will either be treating you the same, but you just don't care. Or uh, maybe they can sense that you have confidence and they'll give up uh, treating you like crap. Everything is perspective, so yeah. Hang in there. I found ways to enjoy and really savor the small moments in between because they do add up. Smile. <laughs> this year is gonna be awesome. I have a lot of things that I wanna do with it and I think it's gonna be great. I managed to refresh, rejuvenate, change my perspectives and really embrace the beauty in life and choose my battles and I was all the better for it life became amazing again. I went back to work, invincible. My work contract was coming to a close and I was gonna finish strong. So the countdown's on. Soon work will be done. I'm about a month away, <laughs> for real this time. It's after work and I've got three days left of my contract and I'm just feeling so fine. It was a success. I made many connections and felt good about the project. I'll remember the good parts forever. So I'm in a parkade in my van, just having a little nap. And I had the realization that my fairy lights still work in here, which is a miracle. I have never changed the battery in this. It survived the winter. I'm in a parkade. Life is kind of boring right now because I just finished work. <laughs> <coughs> just finished the wrap party. 
I've been sick for like a month. I need rest, I'm pretty worn out. And my dad's really sick in the hospital, so I don't know how soon I'm gonna be able to go on my travels, but we'll see. A stick has been put in the spokes. This changes things a little bit, um, my plans, which is fine. I love my dad and I wanna be there for him, so. And now with work complete, it was time to move out of the apartment and back into the van. Having this apartment is like, uh, it's like a crutch. Yes, it's comfortable here, but it's too comfortable. And this was only supposed to be temporary anyways. I'm not gonna get anywhere by staying here. I wanna pursue my passions and actually prove that I have some skills. I think if I give up my apartment, it'll force me to be more out there in the world and be more social. I want the freedom to go somewhere and not to feel like I have somewhere to fall back on. If I have nowhere to fall back on, I'm gonna create even more interesting stories for myself. I'm here on this earth to live and to create stories. I'm not here to hide away and be a hermit. I'm supposed to get out there and meet people. It's scary uh, to give up my apartment, but I just have this nagging thing telling me that I have to do it. So I made sure, with the exception of these plants, uh, not to get settled too much. I've got one spoon, two bowls, no plates. It'll be easy to downsize and move back in. Famous last words. There's just crap everywhere and it's very overwhelming. I have a lot of stuff still, so that's what I'm gonna tackle first before moving back into the van. This makes me realize how much stuff I actually do have and it's like, how did, how did this happen? What's gonna happen is I'm gonna sort it into what I wanna keep or put into storage, what I wanna completely get rid of, uh, like what I wanna take to Goodwill and what I want to take into the van. And what I take into the van is going to be as minimal as possible. But of course, there's a few luxury items. Things such as my guitar. My bike's not going to fit. This is not going to fit. I got to sell that. I'm going to sell this table. I like this chair. It took me a long time to find it. I'm going to put that into storage. Consumables. I can burn this down. Got a flashlight. I can use that. There's a bunch of books I can put into storage that I don't need right away. This chocolate, man. I'm having a hard time getting through it. Hopefully I can keep some of these hand warmers. I don't really need this guy. <laughs> My friend gave it to me. I don't know, I'll probably take him. Just so much crap everywhere. This is such a mess. It's a bunch of clothes I have to um, sort through. I think this looks more overwhelming than it is. I don't really have that much stuff. It just looks like a lot right now since everything is just so messy. My sister was growing um, this aloe vera plant and these are the remnants of what's left from that. I would really love to keep them alive. <laughs> this is my mission. It's really a beautiful little apartment. Very good location. Very small. I don't really need anything more. My plan is to travel. There's no point keeping an apartment if I'm going to be traveling, so. So keep calm and carry on. So I've run into some delays. Um, since I finished work, I've just been absolutely exhausted. And the last bit of work, I had been sick and it was getting better, but it's just hit me again. So this is delaying me moving out of the apartment and uh, getting to my dad who is in the hospital. Also, I went to the eye doctor. I need to go in for a follow-up appointment and then get referred to a specialist. Some things are a bit delayed. It's important to take care of your health first and then take care of others or then go on vacation. Obviously, I've been working too much the past two years. I've been battling this thing for like a month. My body just doesn't know how to fight anything anymore. And it's raining like cats and dogs outside. Um, it's harder to kind of like arrange stuff in my van. And there's just pools of water uh, down below by the wheels. I've just run into a few delays. People, things will simmer down and I'm gonna heal and it's gonna be great. I can't wait to go on vacation. I need it so bad. Just keep on trucking. Keep on van life in. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go rest my voice now. I don't know if you can hear my alternator fan belt, but... Oh, I'm moving now. Hang on a sec. My alternator also started breaking down. More on that later. Now that I have the first round of stuff in storage, I'm actually getting less anxious about moving back into the van and more excited. That always happens. It just takes a little bit of action to get out of your head and to rid yourself of the anxiety. But yeah, I'm on my way. I got a date square. 
and I got some cranberry walnut bread. Okay, okay now. Mm. All right, now I'm gonna go off to an eye appointment. I'm gonna get my eyes dilated. Uh, there's just a thing in my eyes they gotta take a look at. Uh, so that was a success with my eyeballs. They looked, not my voice, jeez. I hate packing, I hate moving, but somehow I manage with so much more stuff than I think I have. But I just gotta do <clears throat> the final push and take care of it. I just gotta keep moving. Just keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. Think of all the good things to come. Can you feel my anxiety? Can you feel it? way I should have done it rather than going through all my things and deciding whether I want them or not. Think of it like I'm packing on a trip. And then you take like a couple of outfits, you take your toiletries and just a few more like your bathing suit or whatever. And if I would have done that, and usually that's enough to survive on for months, like you can go forever like that rather than going through all your stuff and being like, do I want, like, am I gonna need this? Am I gonna want this? And most of the time it's like, yeah, yeah, I want this dress and this dress and that dress but I should approach it as I'm packing for a little trip. I've spent so much time on this already. This is so stupid. I'm embarrassed because I, I see myself as a minimalist, but I'm not, I'm not quite there yet. I've got to take some library books back to the library. So maybe a short walk to the library will help clear my mind a little bit. I feel like a student again. To the library. You know what's happening to me? It's decision fatigue. Just too many decisions. Should I keep this? Should I get rid of this? It's driving me mental. I feel like I'm driving you mental. But yeah, that's what I have. Decision fatigue. I'm very tired. So some guy, actually like one of my neighbors right now, just asked, he's like, so is this your van? And I was like, yeah, he's like, cause uh, it looks like a spy van. What do you have in there? Like secret computers and stuff. Yeah, he thought it was a spy van, but I explained to him it's just a simple camper van. And of course he brought up insulation. He's like, yeah, I did it for my brother. And first thing I did was put in insulation. And I'm just like, I know, I know. I just don't know how to do it. I don't know how to insulate. I want to do other things right now. That's why I'm not doing insulation. I'm sorry, okay? I'm sorry. He was very nice. I know I need insulation, but uh, not today. Okay, apparently my dad had a rough night in the hospital and he hasn't been able to eat solid food for over a week, uh, maybe two. I don't know, I've lost track of time. He's really fragile right now. He's not doing that well and I'm embarrassed about how long this is freaking taking me. Like, I just need to get out of here and go see my dad. So I just need to stop messing around and just realize what's important right now and just like everything will sort itself out. But stop like... Just take what you need, throw everything else in storage, and get out of here. And you can always come back and grab your stuff. Family first, like stop being so freaking selfish. Like get, just get it done and get out of here. So I just got a call from Susan and she says my dad is doing very horrible. I, uh, I just have to leave this mess and drive there right now. I just have to, like, I just have to go right now. I was not expecting my van life to start like this. I'm leaving Calgary and I'm gonna have to come back because I just left a bunch of crap at my apartment just laying out. I tried to pack my van with the stuff that I was gonna put in my van but it's like way overkill but I, <laughs> I'm so overwhelmed right now. But I just gotta get to Lethbridge and deal with the task at hand like screw van life and all my stuff just right now like I mean not I mean I have my van I don't you know I don't know I just need to get to my dad uh so my stepmom was talking about it as if like end of life kind of stuff decisions about making his in 200 meters she was talking about like pulling the plug kind of stuff on my dad if because he's going through so much pain I could uh hear it in her voice that she was severely worried about this, so uh, it's a wake-up call. I need to go now. Don't give up.
up Just hold on tight It'll be alright It's not fair You did your time